And I'm making it more real to me than I am the incidents or the challenges or the circumstances that I'm going through. So there's such power in that. Jill got this for me from psychology today. Just a simple little truth here. It says you can rewire your brain for more happiness by simply recalling three things you're grateful for every day for at least 21 days. And that recalling was writing and saying. I like what you had, Brittany, in your word there, that you were speaking that more sure word of prophecy. And when I can take things that I'm standing on, believing God for, and I begin to say them and write them down. Our dear old friend Roger Heim that used to uh, be at Courts of Praise years ago, he's in heaven now, and he was the head of World Salt. Matter of fact, it was the first pastor here, Murray Callahan, who worked with Roger. And Roger, the first guy, said, your life will be changed if you'll let the Holy Spirit guide you to a scripture and say it out loud three times a day. Now, that's not a law-given prescription. That's not a rabbit's foot that everything's going to work out okay. But it was a thing to start speaking. And I remember he said that, and I started doing that. And he said, and then pause, pray in the Holy Ghost, and watch how he'll give you specific revelation. And then he said at the end, thank God for it. I've done that through the years, and it's been a wonderful way for me to get a message, to get a devotional, to share with other people, and that is to take this word and begin to say it out loud. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things and then say, Father, I thank you for that revelation. And your mind may be as blank as an erased board, but the Holy Spirit is gearing up to speak to you, to guide you, and to lead you. So... Last week we talked about the seven prophecies of Christmas. We won't go over that again today, but all the folks in that, six people, three men, three women. Wasn't that interesting? That those that were involved receiving prophecies from angels and giving prophecies were three men, three women. And they received from the Spirit, and most of them that received like Zacharias, like Simeon, like Elizabeth, and like Mary, as they received it in, they then spoke it out. They first received a word from the Spirit, and then they became <clears throat> the voice of the Spirit to speak it back out. Mary was spoken to by the angel, and then she comes back and speaks forward. And the speaking forward on almost all of them other than Joseph was a word of praise, glory, blessing, or thanksgiving. The Holy Spirit speaks to them. What happened to dear old Zacharias? John the Baptist's father. He came up and said, I'm too old for this. It's impossible. It can't happen. The angel said, sorry, but I'm going to have to shut you up for a while. <laughs> he didn't have praise on his lips. He didn't have thanksgiving. Why? We've told you before that thanksgiving is the place of releasing your faith and agreeing with God. Zach didn't agree with God. But when he came back and said, along with his wife, this child's name won't be called Zacharias. It'll be called John. He agreed with God. Then he started to praise God. He gave thanks to God. His mouth was opened, of course, so that he could speak that forward. He declared, this child's name will be called Beloved, which is what John means. The same thing with Elizabeth. She started to declare. And what did she declare after she had had the word that she was with child? She receives a prophetic word, then she starts to praise God. All you Catholics know this. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. She's spoken to, she speaks out. And what's the speaking out? It's a word of thanksgiving and a word of praise. Mary herself, she's spoken to by the angel, and she said, be it done unto me. Not according to this circumstance. This is tough. It looks like I'm pregnant out of wedlock. This situation is going to be tough on Joseph. He's 40 and I'm 14. This situation looks scary on the outside. But I tell you what, I'm not looking at that. Just as you said today, Brittany, be it done unto me according to your word. And what does she do to bring that word to pass? My soul doth magnify the Lord. My soul doth magnify the Lord. She brought it forth in thanksgiving and praise and glorifying God. Simeon, who was waiting all of his life, 
to see this child. As soon as he holds that child, begins to give praise to God and to prophesy. Why? Our same theme today. The Holy Spirit spoke it to him, but now is speaking through him to those that were around him. And what was part of that speaking through? Thank you, Father God, for the appearance of the Messiah that I'm holding as a baby in my hands. At that time, he was 112 years old. That's what tradition says. It's not in the Word of God, but historically that's what they said. But then there's another precious lady who was spoken to, and that was Anna. And Anna comes and actually says the word thanks because of the long-awaited Savior. So every one of the folks, you all, every one in the Christmas story started to speak faith. And what was that faith? They simply were agreeing with God. They were agreeing with God. Once Zacharias agreed with God in thanksgiving, boom, he's loosed. And he begins to speak God's word. Spoken to, spoken through. And I believe all of you, just as a testimony we heard today, God will speak to you this year, but not just to hold it to yourself, to speak it through you in praise, in glory, in thanksgiving, in edification, and encouragement to people. Now, here's what I want to say today. There's two types of thankfulness. I want to be thankful, but I want to give thanks. In other words, I want to be thankful for what has been done. Our testimony today was a be thankful. But you notice that in the midst of the be thankful, there's also a giving thanks. Here's what the giving thanks is. The giving thanks is speaking forth the word by agreeing with the promise. Our famous word, homologeo, where we get over in... Hebrews 13, 15, uh, to continually give thanks unto the Lord. In other words, to agree with God. So what I'm doing is first, I'm saying, thank you, Father, for all that you've done. But I give thanks for this promise I'm standing on. The Holy Spirit speaks to me. Now he's speaking through me. And I'm standing on that promise just as sure as the tailors did for little Noah. So today, ladies and gentlemen, you can be thankful for the past. That's our Thanksgiving meal. But then what's the promise you're standing on? Do you have promises for this year? Do you have a more sure word of prophecy? And then once you have that spoken to you, then let him speak it out through you like what Roger Heim said. And watch your faith rise. And watch the situations change. And watch the circumstances alter. Be thankful, give thanks. Now, Thanksgiving, ladies and gentlemen, breaks captivity. It broke Brittany's captivity of the bleed out, of all that. It breaks captivity. Let me give you some examples. First, let me, let me just back up a minute. Let's go ahead and put up uh, Jeremiah 33, 11. I told you last week my brother-in-law passed away. He was like a brother to me. Uh, we went up to Louisville to be there with my family. And I tell you what, I had to practice this because I was grieving. I loved this guy and uh, loved his family, my sister. But as we were going up, y'all, the traffic was horrific. This was just two days before Christmas. Tough time to have a funeral. But uh, I tell you what, there were wrecks all over Atlanta. There were wrecks all over Chattanooga. Uh, on, going over 24 to Nashville was horrible. And then going up to Louisville, and Louisville was a nightmare. All the four cities I went through were just unreal. And I thought about, I better practice what I preach. <laughs> so I had the two sides of this. I had to be thankful. Father, thank you. By that time, we were on 65 going to Nashville, just coming out. And Nashville, so crowded. Nashville, such a huge city now. Good night. Nothing like it was 20 years ago. So, I mean, it's a mega city. And so then we're, we're trying to go around this Briley Parkway and go around there. There's two or three more wrecks. So each time I was seeing them, I just said, Father, thank you that you have protected us. But I give you thanks that as we go on up 65 to Louisville, that you are our protector. Be thankful. Give thanks. And Lord, this will break the captivity of fear that I'm feeling right now in the midst of feeling very mournful about losing my brother-in-law. And in that moment, as I just began to give him thanks and to give him praise for the good that happened and the good that will happen, there was a release in my soul and my heart because thanksgiving and praise ministers to your heart. But why is that important? Because with the heart, man believes. 
And so once I minister to my heart in thanksgiving, that heart becomes soft and pliable, and the word that's spoken to me can now come through me to say, Lord, I'm believing that myself, my wife, and my son Nathan are going to be safe as we go up this interstate. And we were. Um, I switched a lane as I was coming up 65, Greg, and I thought about you out on the bus all the time that you're doing Greg's Hall and all these groups and bands and everything. I thought about you, brother, out there all the time. And I switched the lane because the guy was slowing down. But as I went over to another lane, a guy just slammed on his brakes. And I missed him by just probably, what, two inches, honey? If that, yeah. Maybe down to centimeters. <laughs> Our fenders were smiling at each other right there. And you know the first thing that popped out of my, life, out of my mouth? I thank you, God, for your promise. I thank you, God, for your promise. I thank you, God, for your promise. Woo! I thank you we've gotten this far, and now I give thanks that we'll go all the way. And there was a confidence in my soul, even though we just had about had a horrible accident. That's the way we walk. Well, what did that do? That ministered to my heart as I was saying that. And so as it ministered to my heart, it softened my heart. It allowed me to believe in my heart. What was spoken to me came on through me, stopped an accident. So I want to tell you, this message is so eminently practical. Now, here's the thing. Thanksgiving breaks captivity. Let's read this up here on the screen. The voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom. Boy, if that's not praise, I don't know what is. And the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, who's the bride? We are. Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good. For his mercy endures forever. You remember, this was David's song. David used this so many times when he'd go out against the enemy. When he'd go out against the enemy, he would begin to do the same thing. Jehoshaphat copied him. Jeremiah copied him. What did they do? They were spoken to. Now they spoke through. And it broke captivity, just like it did with Brittany. For his mercy endures forever. Of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Here's the promise. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land. Whatever your land is. I don't mean physical land. Maybe your financial land. Maybe it's your physical land, your health land. Maybe it's your relational land. Whatever that is, I'm telling you that the sacrifice of praise in this house of the Lord starts to return captivity. I've seen it happen over and over again. That's what Jeremiah is referring to. Or so what are some of the things that we've talked about in this series that deal with the breaking of captivity? Well, think about it. Jesus giving thanks, as we've said so many times, at Lazarus' tomb. He said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. Well, what had happened? He had been spoken to, because remember, he stayed away four days. You know that teaching. Why did he stay away four days before he came back? Because any person that raises someone from the dead after four days, they would believe would be a Messiah. If they raised them from the dead after three days, they'd say, well, he's just a, he's just a great rabbi. But after four days, he's the Messiah. So as he comes back after the fourth day, he's been spoken to. But now he says, Father, I thank you. The timing's just right. I thank you that you always hear me. What captivity was broken? Death. Death was broken as he gave thanks for what the Lord was going to do because he'd been spoken to and now he was speaking through by the great and precious promises. What happened with the lepers, the ten lepers, and the one guy that came back and he said, thank you. And what happened? The other lepers had been healed, but remember that leper? He was cleansed completely and made whole. Anybody ever seen a person in leprosy? You know that digits, fingers, nose, ears fall off. It's horrible. It's a hideous disease. But he comes back with a thank you, and what happened with him? Captivity was broken. I thank you, Lord. Go your way. You're made whole. Wow. The captivity was broken. You say, well, now, is this just some kind of mantra? Is this a rabbit's foot? Is this? No, it's not, because thanksgiving is the release of your faith in agreement with what the Lord has spoken. So it's not a just thing you do to get. That would be law. If I say, now give thanks four times, you're going to get blessed. That would be legalism. Because you do, then God will do. No, you know what the truth is. You've heard us say it so many times. <clears throat> legalism is always, I do, and then God has to respond. No, here's the truth of it, is that he already does the work, and then I receive it. 
See, folks, we've got to get out of the idea that everything about Christianity is an attainment. I've got to attain unto faith. I've got to attain unto righteousness. No, you don't. I didn't have to attain for the sun to rise today, but I noticed it and agreed with it. I don't have to attain to something I already am. I have to become aware of it and receive it. That's what thanksgiving is. You see, I work too hard as a Christian for too long. And then that's where burnout comes. That's why so many pastors quit and give up because they're trying to attain a great church and trying to attain a great ministry. I tried that. In 2003, I had three heart attacks. I'm telling you, it doesn't work. Coming into the place of rest is what works. And when you walk in that place of rest, you then don't have to attain it. You already see it. A fish doesn't have to attain to swim. That's just who he is. All he has to do is do it. That's who he is. A bird doesn't have to attain to fly. That's who they are. They just do it. So our key is becoming aware. So the thanksgiving that Jesus had before Lazarus' tomb, I'm aware of your promise, Lord. And of course, your promise is yes and amen. And then it's done. Thank you, Lord. From the supernatural to the natural, from the unseen to the seen, from the part that is actual reality into actuality. Actually, he's dead. Reality, he lives. Actually, today, you and I are in this room. In reality, we're seated at the right hand of the Father. High position, lowly walk. My walk here is determined by my position there. Did I have to attain it? No. So what is the labor? To enter into rest. To enter into rest. That's what I'm saying when we talk about Thanksgiving. Who else? Well, we've talked about Jehoshaphat all the time. What did Jehoshaphat do? His Thanksgiving broke the captivity of warring tribes trying to kill him. You all had anybody try to kill you this year? We did at our house. We had hackers try to hit us for the last two years. Take out everything we had. We've told you about that whole story. I won't go over that all again. But I'll tell you what, I didn't give thanks every time. I wanted to kill somebody. <laughs> Thank goodness it's a little bit better. But uh, about ruined my son. It's uh, been a nightmare beyond measure. I never understood what it's like to be intruded upon with every electronic device you have spied on, chased, run down, stolen from. It's It's frightening. But I want to tell you what, when I finally came to the place of doing my own sermon and began to say, Father, I thank you for the liberty we're going to have in our home. I thank you that Nathan is getting set free. I thank you, Father, he's going to have a sound mind. I thank you that fear shall not dominate him. I thank you, Father, that our household will not be under a domination of intimidation. Now, I can't tell you that that just happened immediately, but I want to tell you, as soon as I did that, I came into agreement with God. I didn't have to try to attain it. Oh, I better press in harder. I better press in harder. If I press in more, folks, there's nothing wrong with intercessory prayer. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. But I want to tell you what. It's a different kind of intercession than I did 20 years ago, where then I got to attain that fight with God. No, here's what I got now. Thank God. We got Colossians 1, 13. Thank you, Father that you have made us partakers of your inheritance, already having defeated darkness and have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Folks, my mind is conditioned by things. You're conditioned by your past. You're conditioned today by the weather. You're conditioned by a holiday. You're conditioned by what mom and daddy said. You're conditioned by your thoughts, your feelings, your circumstances, and your predicament. But I want to tell you, your spirit is not. It is not conditioned by environment. It is conditioned by the Spirit of the living God. And when you give thanks, you're releasing the unconditioned part into this part that's been conditioned. And now, was that something you did? Sure. If I had a $100 bill up here, I'd say, hey, got $100 for somebody up here. And somebody would come up and get it. Well, it's already yours, already provided for you. All you have to do is take it. So the labor would be the receiving. I don't think any of your children that you gave Christmas gifts to this year that you had to tell them, now you know you got to do 15 sit-ups and 25 push-ups. <laughs> and if you spill any food on the floor, then you don't get anything. You're going to have to earn this, bud. No, you didn't. You gave it to them because you love them. And that's what our God is. What happened with Abraham? Same thing. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. 
but is strong in faith. How is he strong in faith? Giving glory to God. That was the strength of his faith. Then he gave glory to God. What was he doing? Simply what we've said all morning. Agreeing with what God had already said. Spoken to, spoken through. That's where your thanksgiving is. And it breaks captivity. The promises of God are what? Yes and? Okay, as we said before. Who did the yes? Jesus did. He said yes to coming into this world. He said yes to going into the Garden of Gethsemane. He said yes to being there at the Jordan River to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. He said yes to the cross. He said yes to the terrible crucifixion. He said yes to going into hell and defeating the enemy. He said yes to laying there in a tomb and allowing the Father to raise him up. And he said yes when he took his blood before the throne of Almighty God. He said yes, and all we say is, amen. well, amen. And that's your thanksgiving. Amen means so be it. So now I receive it. Now, does that mean the moment you receive it, that everything has changed? Brittany wasn't changed immediately as you were making those promises, Brittany. But you came forth, and there's that precious baby. Wow. Thanksgiving becomes what I said in my title, a thanks living. This is how you live. This is how you abide. This is where you walk. Jesus came and preached his first sermon on the Jubilee. First thing he said was quoting from Isaiah 61 in reference to Leviticus 25 about the Jubilee. What was the Jubilee? The Jubilee was a year of thanksgiving and praise where they did nothing but rested. Isn't that interesting? Why didn't they work and have thanksgiving and praise? No, they rested. It was a Sabbath rest because they would see what I told you today. Be thankful for what you had, but extend your faith to the future. That's what the Jubilee was. But it was a breaking of captivity because you remember the word that Jesus preached and he didn't hit it just exactly of what Isaiah said. He added a few little things to it which make it even more powerful. You remember he said, I've come to preach this gospel to the poor. They're in captivity. I've come as the Jubilee, because remember the next verse says, today this scripture is fulfilled in your, in your uh, presence. I am Jubilee. It's not a year on the calendar anymore. It is not the 50th year. It's me. So now that's a place of praise and thanksgiving. And what happened in that praise and thanksgiving? Well, the poor were ministered to, captivity broken over the poor. If you've been poor this year, I'm believing with all of us, you don't have to be poor no more. Because as you start to do what Brittany did and you start to praise God and get the promise of God, the word spoken to you and then the word spoken through you, in every circumstance, you can begin to come into that place of rest and not have to strain and struggle over your finances. Next thing was what? He would heal the brokenhearted. Man, we've had a lot of broken hearts this year. Had a lot of angry hearts in America, haven't we? A lot of people are just angry, mad, bitter. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't care what you hear, whether you're watching MSNBC or CNBC or CNN or Fox or whatever you're watching or whatever your thing is. The minute I come on there and folks are getting mad, starting to get critical, you know what? I find my heart starting to pull towards it. I can't afford it this year. I ain't going to do it. I'm either going to shut the TV off or I'm going to lift my hand and start to praise God for our president, for our Senate, for our Congress, for everybody. Whether it's Republican, Democrat, I don't care what. I'm going to start praying over the house, even though there's 40 new Democrats in there this year. I'm praying for them. And you know what? To get caught up in the fervor of that bitterness stops my faith. And I want to tell you, I don't see any thanksgiving. And all of a sudden, I'm not here to word coming to me so the word can come through me. I can't afford the luxury of that because you know what? I become brokenhearted. And I don't mean just sad brokenhearted. I become mad brokenhearted. It's not just sad brokenhearted. You can be a mad brokenhearted as well. We can't afford that luxury in 2019, everybody, because then I believe we hinder our own faith from being released in our prayer. What was the next thing? Then he said he would bring deliverance to the captives. Wow, lots of captives. Sight to the blind. He wouldn't talk about just these eyes. He's talking about the blindness of the heart. Praise God. Thanksgiving releases that captivity. And he said, my favorite part, Set at liberty. Isn't that a neat word? I want to set at liberty. I'd love to put that if we had a decent sign out here. Maybe someday we can afford a nice time sign and say, Grace Covenant Worship Center, setting people at liberty. 
who are bruised. A lot of people are bruised through a lot of different things. They didn't realize they had the liberty all along to know that what we sang today, the presence of the Lord would sustain them, uphold them, guide them, and protect them, just as sure as he did on our trip up to Louisville. All right. Jesus provides the yes. We've got the amen. Gratitude changes your attitude, and it gives you a new altitude. I kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about a couple of places where captivity is broken. Just a, just a few. Look over in uh, Colossians 2. Colossians, the second chapter, verse 7, 8. Again, very familiar places. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. This is what we started our whole series on. As you have been taught, abounding therein with, say it, with, with? So how do you abound in your faith? With thanksgiving. Because it breaks the captivity. It breaks the hold. Now, we have never talked about the next verse. I taught you on this. If you want to abound in faith, abound in thanksgiving. But look at the next verse. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and deign deceit after the traditions of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. What are the rudiments of the world? If you do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad. Now, there's truth in that in the natural world. Of course there is. There's sowing and reaping. Jesus is taking care of all of our sin, but sin carries its own judgment. You don't have to come back and say, God's going to judge you. God could not judge you for sin because he judged Jesus. He wouldn't do double jeopardy on you. It's already been judged. But now, sin carries its own judgment. But here's what he's talking about with the rudest of the world. He's not talking about sin. He's saying, here's how you thought you'd change yourself. You thought that the way to get better is touch not, taste not, do not. Talk not. Be not. New Year's resolutions. I'm not going to touch another piece of cake for the next six months. That's the rudiment of the world. I am going to study the Word of God every day. Bless God, I'm going to get up earlier than I have. I know I should be reading the Bible. I'm going to do I'm not going to get into a bunch of frustrating conversations with my relatives this year. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to treat my family with some kindness this year. <laughs> Bless God. Give it up, folks. You see... When I give thanks, I don't have to have the rudiments of touch, not taste, not. You say, well, where is that in the Bible? Right here in the same chapter. Matter of fact, look over at verse 20. Let's go to verse 20 of that. I love this. This is so good. You see, folks, the thanksgiving he's talking about here is breaking the captivity of the law. That now I've I got to do this, better not do that. That's not trusting God. That's trusting you. That's trusting willpower. Well, I'm going to lose weight this year. I sure am. Oh, that's trusting my willpower. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to have a better attitude. Oh, God, help me have a better attitude. He doesn't want to help you to have a better attitude. He wants you to release Jesus' attitude in you. So what I'm talking about is a faith issue. The other one is a willpower issue. So look what it says here. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ, look at this, it's so good. Dead with Christ from what? The rudiments of the world. Oh, my goodness. If I'd known this 30 years ago, I never would have had to. I gain 40, I lose 20. I gain, blah, 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 blah. Because I was under the rudiments of the world. Why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Now, folks, we've got to have laws. I don't understand that. We're not talking about the law. Uh, our brother's a police officer. Praise God. Thank God for that. 
We're talking about in your interpersonal flow with God and your desire to want to better yourself, which you want to. I can't tell you how many times I've said, this year, I'm going to exercise. And it lasts till about my birthday, which is January 15th. <laughs> Here's my ordinance. Bless God, that's my ordinance. I'm going to call my family in Kentucky. I, I am going to do that. Here comes Thanksgiving around. Thanks for calling us once this year. You see, those ordinances, I'm going to do better for God. I'm going to hear God better this year. I'm going to do that. I used to hear uh, a lot of word and faith preachers say, make a quality decision. Well, there was truth in that, but I was making the decision about moi. Now, here's the interesting thing. I'm not going to go back over these scriptures, but right after... Get this now, right after the Apostle Paul said, abounding therein with thanksgiving, abounding in what? In your faith. Thanksgiving releases faith. Spoken to, spoken through. Be thankful, give thanks. Now, look at all the things, and I'm just going to make a quick synopsis. We won't put it on the screen. Here's all the things you could do instead of the rudiments of the world. Touch not, taste not, don't do. Matter of fact, go ahead to the next verse so they can see those rudiments. Go to 21. Here it is. Look. We're delivered from these. Touch not, taste not, handle not. Well, Jill, what was it that uh, Nathan said the other day? He wasn't going to do something. You said, no, don't say that. He was talking about our son said, I'm not going to do this this year. I said, just drop it. Just drop it. Why don't you come back and trust the great and precious promises and release his ability in you, not by attainment, but say, thank you, Father, it's already mine, and begin to walk in who you are. Now listen to this. Instead of the rudiments of the world, I will love my husband this will. I will love my wife this year. I will get along with people. Bless God, I'm going to do it. You wouldn't realize how many people suffer under this. I'm making fun of it. It's not funny. Here's what the Lord has provided us to make changes. Listen to this. Just listen to this synopsis right after that verse in verse 7. Here's what it comes. In him dwells the fullness of God. I'd say that would kind of help you to make some changes, wouldn't it? You are complete in him, the next verse. That would do you a pretty good thing. Next verse. You are with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of sin by the circumcision of Christ. And he didn't mean his physical circumcision on the eighth day. He meant the wounds on his body. Whoa, would that help you to stop sin by putting faith in what was done to his body? Putting faith that you're complete? Putting faith in the fact that you are now inside the Son of God and he's in the inside of you? Whoa, next verse, buried with him. What's buried mean? I'm, I'm going to stop drinking this year. I'm going to quit. I've been smoking dope a long time, and man, I'm going to stop. I've been chewing tobacco, and I'm going to give up on it. And I've been cussing a lot, and I just got to stop. Just forget it. Don't do it. Those are the rudiments of the world. And again, I'm, I'm using things that are a little bit on the light side. In our counseling, we deal with some heavy things, and the majority of people come in and say, I really want to quit this. I said, are you ready to see how to quit it? Not by attainment, but by walking in a thanksgiving that breaks corruption that stops captivity? How about you realizing when he was buried? You know when something's buried? I just buried my brother-in-law. You know what? He'll never come back. His body will never move again. He's in that ground. It's not him. He's in heaven. That's just his earth suit. But you know what, what burial means? It'll never come back again. Your habit will never come back again if you would just say, thank you that I'm buried with him. Thank you. I'm complete in him. Thank you. I'm more than a conqueror in him. It's not just a little word you say on Sunday morning. It's something you begin to abide in. And all of a sudden, you're agreeing with God like what Brittany said. And the next thing you know, instead of you trying to use the ordinances of the world, I'll quit that, I'll stop that, then you start saying, Christ lives in me. Oh, my God. Thank you, Father. I don't have to do touch not, taste not, and do not. I now have the burial of Christ, the circumcision of his wounds. It says I have the faith of the operation of the Son of God. I'm now totally forgiven of my trespasses. He's blotted out the handwriting of ordinances. What are the handwriting of ordinances? The law, the Ten Commandments. Does that mean I don't keep them? No, I keep them better than ever before because he keeps them in me. How do I release that faith? 
I thank him. I receive it. I quit trying to attain something I already have. And I begin, like the sunrise in the morning, to see it. Oh, folks, that's called revelation knowledge. What did I say? The Holy Spirit to you and then living and speaking it through you. It's not hard. We've made it tough. The captivity of the law is broken over you. Does that mean you goof off and do anything you want? No. Now you have a new fear of the Lord. The old fear of the Lord was a selfish fear. It was you scared of what he'd do to you. Ah, but that's not true under the new covenant. Now, the new covenant fear of the Lord, and David, you've taught on this so beautifully. This aspect of it is this. I say, oh my God, my hands are his hands. My eyes are his eyes. My tongue is his tongue. My appetite is his appetite. For me to live is not just to be like Christ or do the things of Christ. For me to live is Christ. My faith is now not by what I see, but now it's by what I don't see, but what I believe. I walk by faith and not by sight. Wow, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made just like little Noah. But now when I start to realize what is in me, it's not a scary fear. It's an awe that I don't have to do the old touch not, taste not, quit that, don't do that, be better, pray harder, go to church, you better tithe, you better help, you better be there. Come on, get with it, boy. I heard every coach I ever had say that kind of stuff to me. <laughs> every coach I ever had, basketball, cross country, golf, is all that. Hit that ball better if you just keep your head down. Just do, just do, just do. Now, is that, coaches have to tell you that. But you know what? With the Lord, it's not built on the rudiments of this world. It's built on receiving a person and thanking him for it. I got so many of these. We need to shut it down here in a second. <laughs> All right, I'll just give you this right quick. I got so many. We'll have to continue this on next week. See, even over in Ephesians 5, we won't go to it. I'll just quote it. I've had more people delivered from alcoholism by what I'm going to tell you right now than any other thing we've ever done in counseling. Typical scripture, Ephesians 5, 18. You've heard it. Don't be drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. You see, he didn't say, don't be drunk with wine, wherein is in excess, and pray that you'll stop it. Yeah. Rudiments of the world, already gone to the cross, already taken care of. He didn't say that. He said, but be filled with the Spirit. And then another verse down, we skip one verse and then go down to 20. It says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father by the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. So what's he saying? Break the captivity of an addiction to drugs or alcohol or whatever. Not by touch not, taste not, handle not but by thanking him that you have the Holy Spirit. And what's the Holy Spirit do? Brings you Jesus, brings you Jesus, brings you Jesus, brings you Jesus, brings you Jesus. Gives you everything that he has bought and paid for. He shows you his yes. And all you do is say amen. And what's your amen? Thank you, God, that I received that right now in the name of Jesus. You won't feel it. You'll think you're being hypocritical. You'll think this doesn't do any good. And yet by you agreeing with God in that place, all of a sudden, how many times have I heard this? I just don't have that taste for it anymore. And even right there, when we're about to take another fifth of Jim Bean. We just went by the Jim Bean distillery going up because it's in my hometown. I looked over at that gigantic distillery and I thought, oh, you know, hey, I'm glad y'all are doing good. But we got to deal with the results on the other side. And you know what? I've had people right in the middle of fixing up the 14th toddy and start to say, I thank you, Lord, that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And because I am, I'm not going to go back to touch not, taste not, do not, act not, better be, shape it up, boy. I will now by faith with the new fear of the Lord trust that Jesus' taste buds are becoming mine. I thank you for it, Lord. Oh, 
See, then trying to attain unto it by saying, well, I'll be an alcoholic all the rest of my life. You don't have to say that anymore. You see, now you can give thanks for what you really are in the Spirit, and that thanksgiving, that agreement with God, starts to transfer that power of God to making it yours. Not coming off from heaven. It's on the inside of you. It's Philippians 2. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. How about 1 Thessalonians 5? You all know this one really well. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You know what that was about? That was to break the captivity. You say, captivity of what? That whole fifth chapter of 1 Thessalonians was all about they were so scared of Jesus returning that they were going to miss it. So what does he tell them to break the captivity of fear? Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. You all are going to miss it. Look out. That's not what Paul was saying. He was trying to tell them Matter of fact, here's this one scripture I wrote down. He says, but you, brethren, are not in darkness. 1 Thessalonians 5, 4. That that day would overtake you as a thief. You're scared about that. You've got a captivity. What's he do with captivity? Gives them thanksgiving. Gives them praise. Then what's the verse right after that? Quench not the spirit. Wow. What was the spirit bringing them? The agreement with God. Don't agree with the situation that you're going in on the outside right now. Begin, uh, begin to agree with the promise of God. And here's our last one. Promise. Promise from the promise. <laughs> Let me read this to you from Colossians. When I was coming down the interstate and I saw all those accidents, I started getting so just worn out. Just worn out. What was normally a seven and a half hour trip became a 12 hour trip. And just about the time I was coming out of Chattanooga, coming back south again, there was so much traffic, y'all, coming up close to New Year's Eve. It was just un... I've never seen anything like it. In all the 30 years I've traveled back and forth, I, just, I was just... And I was worn out, and I felt myself feeling agitated. And this scripture absolutely popped into my heart. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. And that word is umpire. Let the peace of God be your umpire. Not all the cars jerking in and out. Not your tiredness. Not your painful back. Not the sadness you already feel. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. <clears throat> to which you are called. Wow. You and I are called to peace. <laughs> Even in the most difficult, struggle-filled environments, we're called to peace. You are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Wow. Everybody read that whole scripture with me. Here we go from the top. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body. Say it loud. And be ye thankful. Why would you be thankful? You're saying that peace exists, even though I don't see it here in the natural. I don't see it in my situation. I know it's there. And by me doing that, I don't have to attain it. I don't have to try to get it. I don't have to beg for it. I simply receive it. And my thank you says yes, or it says amen to his yes, because the chastisement of our peace was upon him on that cross. What's captivity is holding you today? You try and touch not, taste not, I better change, got to do better, got to try harder. Can I tell you today that all those sentiments were taken to the cross and now you have the completeness of Christ, the baptism of Christ, the burial of Christ, the forgiveness that he has granted you, the loosing from the law, and the release unto his glory is yours. You know what? In 2019, you can be the nicest person, the friendliest person, the most helpful person, the most listening to the Holy Ghost person, the most loving, kind person, because you don't have to try to get it anymore. You now can take what is yours because we walk by faith and not by sight. Wow. Remember what the Apostle Paul said? He said, my grace is sufficient for you. For when you're weak, I'm your strength. Most joyfully, 
Will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me? And then he said five things that he was breaking the captivity of by his glorying, by his thanksgiving. What were they? Here's the five. Infirmities, sickness, breaking the whole. Father, I thank you through this sickness that you're my God. Necessities, money issues. Father, I thank you. As we go through money issues in 2019, I thank you. You're my God. You rule over my heart with peace. And my heart stays pliable for you to speak to me and speak through me. Then the next word is a big one. Reproaches, rejections. Anybody in here gone through any kind of rejection in this last year? Wow. Felt rejected by somebody? Walked through rejection? Rejection at work? Rejection at home? He's dealt with that too. So he said, I'll glory in those places of those rejections. Persecution and finally distress. Thank you, Lord. All those captivities can now be defeated. And I can walk in total fellowship with him and just enjoy the rest. Stand up with me, please.